Welcome to the Did Parley P. Pratt Write the Book of Mormon video. A comment by Benjamin E. Park in the Journal of Mormon History, 2011. He says, It would be difficult to overstate the significance of Parley P. Pratt on early Mormonism. So Parley helped to frame the distinctive doctrines of the LDS Church. Uh, this is from the same source. He says, uh, Parley P. Pratt served to expand, explain, and most significantly, frame the distinctive doctrines of the LDS Church. So from the same journal, 2011, we have Ryan G. Tobler. And he says, having elevated himself to a degree of education through study, Parley moved into the ranks of a small Mormon intellectual elite. So Parley P. Pratt was born in 1807. He died in 1857. He was born in Burlington, New York, which is 30 miles south of Utica. And that's about 50 miles west of Syracuse, New York. In the Deseret News, 1873, it said the following. That is a church-owned newspaper. Uh, it said, Parley, as is well known, was a preacher and a writer of rare ability. So from Parley's autobiography, uh, this is the uh, Facer and Proctor edition. I guess they probably put in a preface and an introduction and whatnot. This is like the official uh, edition by the church, uh, revised in 2000. It said that Parley was an editor, a publisher, a teacher, a school administrator, legislator, and an author. So that's a pretty impressive list. Okay, Larry C. Porter here in the Encyclopedia of Mormonism. He said that Parley was one of the most significant LDS missionaries, writers, poets, and thinkers to emerge during the early years of the LDS Restoration. All right, BYU Studies, 1993, Robert Stephen Pratt. He might be related to Parley. Uh, said Parley was a pivotal figure in early Mormon history. Much of what is regarded as Mormon doctrine was exposited in his many theological works. So he was an expositor of early Mormon doctrine. All right, so Parley had literary talents that were not possessed by his contemporary peers. So that would maybe make him a front runner in, in writing the Book of Mormon. This is from E. Robert Paul, Dialogue 1982. He said, Parley made enormous contributions to Mormon theology he was a seminal early Mormon intellectual and was gifted with literary talents not possessed by his contemporary peers. All right, so Parley was a synthesizer of early Mormon doctrine and theological arguments. Uh, this goes back to BYU Studies, 1993. Parley has been characterized as an intellectual in the early Mormon movement and a synthesizer of the semi-systematic set of theological arguments within Mormonism. Okay, so Parley was the inventor of Mormon book writing, according to Peter Crowley. If he was the inventor of Mormon book writing, maybe he wrote the Book of Mormon. Maybe he invented that as well. Many of the LDS theological works to follow were patterned after Parley's compositions. And pictured above here, we have a number of famous authors. Okay, Peter Crowley again in Dialogue 1982. Parley's arguments put in print 140 years ago have become a permanent part of modern Mormonism. So he was influential. Uh, this is a picture here of the new Mormon Oakland Temple in California. All right, so Parley was an influential publisher of pamphlets. He put out a lot himself, and I believe he peddled those from others as well. Uh, this is a statement in the Encyclopedia of Mormonism. It says, Parley was a central figure in expounding the doctrines of the gospel, and his publication set a standard for future pamphleteers. So future pamphleteers looked at Parley uh, as their standard. All right, from the church's own website, Matthew J. Grow said, Parley began a serious study of the scriptures at age 12. Very early on, 
Parley was conducting a serious study of the Bible at age 12. So Parley was a voracious reader. This according to his own autobiography, which came out in 1874, uh, a few years after he died. Parley reminisced, I always loved a book. A book was in my hand in the morning while others were sitting down to breakfast. The same at noon. So he was reading during breakfast and reading during noon, and he would read at night as well. So Parley continues, If I had a few moments, a book, a book, exclamation, a book at evening while others slept or sported, a book on Sundays, a book at every leisure moment of my life. So he was very well self-educated in the scriptures and in just general reading. Okay, an account in Bancroft's History of Utah. It says, The boy Parley had a passion for books. The Bible especially he read over and over again with deep interest and enthusiasm. So he really liked the Bible. He read it many, many times with a deep interest and enthusiasm. So Parley was also a great speaker or an orator. Uh, this again from Bancroft's History of Utah. Uh, he, Sidney Rigdon, and Parley Pratt were its leading orators and polemics. The two of the very best, if not the best, speakers in the church. Uh, had it not been for the ascension of these two men, that's Sidney Rigdon and Parley P. Pratt, uh, Joseph Smith would have been lost and his schemes frustrated and abandoned. So Parley P. Pratt was very important in this early church as a leader, as a speaker, as in de delivering polemics and writings, maybe even more than Joseph Smith. Okay, a statement about Parley's intelligence. Uh, this from the Daily Missouri Republican, 1857. Uh, the deceased, whose name was Parley P. Pratt, was a man of note among the Mormons. He was a man of more than ordinary intelligence and ability. So, more than ordinary intelligence. So, what did Parley's brother, Orson, have to say about him? Well, he said, even in youth, Parley had an originality of mind. Parley had an originality of mind, a very creative mind uh, for writing. Okay, so again, from his autobiography, and you can find this free online. Uh, it's all over the place. Uh, it's out of copyright, I guess, 1874. Uh, in there it said, at the local Gilbert Common School... The schoolmaster frequently held him, Parley, up to his classmates as a model that they should emulate. So he was kind of the, the, teacher, the teacher's pet, the model student. Uh, the, the teacher said that everybody should emulate Parley. Okay, so Parley expands on that idea. He says, in this school, by close application... I made such extraordinary progress that, that the teacher often spoke of me to the whole school and exhorted them to learn as Parley Pratt did. Uh, said he to some of them who were more fond of mischief than of study, if you would learn as he does, you would become men of wisdom and talent in the world. But if you continue the course that you have done, you will remain in obscurity and an unknown while Parley will be known and fill important stations in society, I do not mention these circumstances by way of boasting, but simply because they are true. How little did I then realize or even dream of the station that I should be called to fill? That is one of the leading uh, members of the Mormon church uh, and became an apostle and other things. So let's talk about an article that came out in a scholarly journal. Uh, it was the Journal of the Association for Literary and Linguistic Computing. Peer-reviewed uh, journal and article here, December 2008. It was by Jockers, Witten, and Criddle, reassessing the authorship of the Book of Mormon. Okay, so like a fingerprint, your writing style your frequency of use of commonly used words 
can act as an identifier of who you are. Everybody has their own writing style. And this study actually evaluates that and who may have written the Book of Mormon. It said, we offer an approach that employs two classification techniques. Uh, one is a delta, which is commonly used to determine probable authorship. And the other is the nearest shrunken centroid model, or NSC, a more generally applicable classifier. We use both methods to determine on a chapter-by-chapter -chapter basis the probability that each of seven potential authors wrote or contributed to the Book of Mormon. Okay, so what did they find? This is the 2008 version of the study. They also repeated it in 2010, and I'll talk about that on the next slide. Uh, Book of Mormon authorship attribution. So the gray lines on this chart are places where they copied the Bible. The green lines on this chart are places where Parley P. Pratt's style of writing shows up in the Book of Mormon. Very interesting. They took a whole bunch of Parley P. Pratt's writings to get his signature or his, his fingerprint. Then they compared it to the writing of the Book of Mormon in the 1830 edition and found that Parley P. Pratt's style of writing, his use of commonly used words, shows up in the Book of Mormon in, in all these places where the green bars are. So you can attribute authorship to the, in these chapters to Parley P. Pratt. So this graphic here is the 2010 version of the study. Uh, the difference was is they added Joseph Smith as a possible author uh, of the Book of Mormon in the 2010 version. In the 2008 version, they couldn't find enough of his writings. But in the 2010, they added Joseph Smith as one of the possible authors because they found more of his uh, writings in his own hand, I guess. Uh, but it says here, Jockers uh, 2010, the study, also obtained evidence of the word usage patterns of Parley Pratt in the Book of Mormon. His pattern is more pronounced at the beginning and the end of the Book of Mormon. So in this one, where the purple uh, bars are, the purple lines... In those chapters of the Book of Mormon, Parley P. Pratt's word usage patterns shows up. So he probably was one of the authors of the Book of Mormon. For more information about the research methods of this study and seven long slideshows about who wrote the Book of Mormon, go to Dr. Craig Criddle's site, mormonleaks.com, not I.O., it's mormonleaks.com. Uh, Craig Criddle is a professor of environmental engineering and science. He's a very smart guy. Uh, he's a professor at Stanford University. Uh, Matthew L. Jockers is also at Stanford University. Uh, he is a lecturer and an academic technology specialist in the Department of English at Stanford University. His research involves computer-based approaches to the study of large collections of literature. All right, so Parley also may have used John Bunyan's book, The Pilgrim's Progress, when he was writing the Book of Mormon. Uh, Bunyan frequently used words like wherefore, whoso, and the that pattern. We know that Parley used this book, that's Pilgrim's Progress, when he wrote his autobiography. You can see that in chapter 32 of that autobiography. Uh, and you can see Dr. Craig Criddle's slideshow about this. At mormonleaks.com, it's episode 5, slide 106. So in the book, uh, Pilgrim's Progress, Bunyan uses the Book of Mormon names of Desolation and Bountiful. Uh, he also talks about the Celestial Kingdom, which is interesting. Uh, you can read an interesting article uh, by William L. Davis, Hiding in Plain Sight, The Origins of the Book of Mormon. This is in... Uh, Los Angeles Review of Books in 2012. And he also talks about how the story of Abinadi in the Book of Mormon was probably taken from this book, Pilgrim's Progress. There's like 15 uh, matching points of interest between the story of Abinadi in the Book of Mormon and Pilgrim's Progress. In 1842, the Reverend Samuel Williams, he's pictured above, named Parley P. Pratt as Sidney Rigdon's probable accomplice in writing the Book of Mormon 
And they said that Parley was the connection to Joseph Smith. He was like the go-between uh, between Sidney Rigdon and Joseph Smith. This according to his book, Mormonism Exposed. Uh, Samuel Williams was the pastor of the First Baptist Church of Pittsburgh from 1827 to 1859, and Sidney Rigdon was the pastor of the same church a few years earlier. So the Reverend Samuel Williams continues, Not long after 1827, Parley P. Pratt, an intimate friend of Sidney Rigdon's, in the secret of the Golden Bible, was acquainted with Martin Harris, and also in the habit of traveling from Ohio, this is Pratt, traveling from Ohio where Rigdon lived to New York where Joseph Smith lived. So there again, he's identifying Pratt as the go-between and maybe the, the accomplice of Sidney Rigdon in writing the Book of Mormon. Uh, so Pratt thus communicated between Rigdon, Smith, Harris, Oliver Cowdery, etc. The whole matter was arranged before the Golden Bible ever made its appearance in Kirtland, Ohio. Joseph Smith never dreamed of the Book of Mormon until it was brought to him from Sidney Rigdon by Parley P. Pratt, the go-between, brought to Joseph Smith by Parley P. Pratt, Harris, or Cowdery. So let's go into some more facts about Parley. He had a lifelong obsession with writing. Well, you might need that to write the Book of Mormon. Uh, this is Terrell Givens and Matthew Groh. Their book is Parley P. Pratt, The Apostle Paul of Mormonism. All right, from the same book, uh, pictured above here, Parley was well-read. He was the most prolific Mormon writer of his age. So in the early days of Mormonism, he wrote more books and pamphlets than anybody. He was a pamphleteer, an essayist, a historian, a hymnist, and a theologian. Pretty impressive. And from the same book, uh, Parley learned to read Spanish. Parley's writings contain eruptions of Ciceronian ornateness, Gibbonesque grandiosity, and lofty descriptions and pedantic references. All right, so Parley's works, his books, held a special status in the early church. Uh, here's an account by Annie Clark Tanner in the same book. She is a Mormon mother, and she said, We had every encouragement to read the church publications. Well, what were they? The Voice of Warning by Pratt, The Pearl of Great Price, and The Key to Theology by Pratt. And then Givens and Gross say that only Pratt's writings would be on equal footing with the Pearl of Great Price, which was canonized as a Mormon scripture in 1880, suggests the special status that Pratt's works held in the minds of early Mormon leaders and laity. Okay, so here is the title page of the first edition of The Voice of Warning, 1837. A first edition of this can go up to $100,000 in the antiquarian book market. The uh, title page says, A voice of warning and instruction to all people containing a declaration of the faith and the doctrine of the Church of the Latter-day Saints. That's interesting. They, they left the name of Jesus Christ out of the name there. Uh, the Church of the Latter-day Saints, which is what it was called for a while. Uh, commonly called the Mormons by Parley P. Pratt, Minister of the Gospel. All right, so what about the key to the science of theology by Pratt? Uh, well, Peter Crowley in Dialogue 1982 had the following to say about it. Uh, the key to theology, 1855, is Mormonism's earliest comprehensive synthetical work. So he's synthesizing all the Mormon teachings and doctrines together in one book. Uh, its scope is complete. It is a masterly book. All right, the title page of the first edition of The Key to the Science of Theology, uh, 1855, by Parley P. Pratt. Uh, first edition of this one can go for up to a few thousand dollars. All right, going back to Givens and Groh's book, his Parley's Corpus, or Catalog of Books, was a virtual fifth scriptural volume of the church. So we have the quad here, pictured above, 
And in the early days, Parley's books were like a fifth volume of scripture. Uh, Thomas D. Brown, in fact, claimed that Joseph Smith had pronounced Voice of Warning by Pratt a standard work of the church. In 1864, Voice of Warning was one of two works that Brigham Young recommended to a correspondent for an overview of Mormon doctrine. All right, in the Deseret News 1875 Books Worth Reading list, uh, Voice of Warning was the very first title mentioned after the scriptures and the hymns. Uh, Pratt's Key to Theology was next. All right, Peter Crowley again in dialogue. Voice of Warning is the most important of all non-canonical Mormon books. The Baptist advocate called Voice of Warning a standard Mormon work. All right, John W. Gunnison, who wrote a book on the Mormons, uh, was called The Mormons or Latter-day Saints, A History of Their Rise and Progress, 1852. He mentioned only three books regarded as authoritative. They were the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and A Voice of Warning. All right, from the same book by Gunnison. The saints considered Pratt's works, wherever found, on a par with the writings of Joseph the Seer and the general epistles of the presidency in Deseret. So voice of warning was pretty much like a scripture. All right, the Latter-day Saint Millennial Star, published for 130 years in England, 1840 to 1970, Parley was the very first editor. All right, so summarizing a few things in Givens and Grow's book again. Uh, Parley wrote extensively in newspapers, pamphlets, and books. Parley clarified Mormon theological points such as God having a body, families in heaven, and the idea that men can become gods. He elucidated all those concepts. Uh, he also provided apologetics for polygamy. All right, from the same book, Parley wrote poetry, hymns, short stories, satire, apologetics, history, and theology. He wrote the first Mormon book of poetry, the first work of Mormon fiction, and the first missionary book. He is responsible for several hundred works. That's hundreds. Parley wrote several hundreds of works, books, and pamphlets. And it uh, looks like a CD here, Parley P. Pratt's Greatest Hymns. A previous LDS hymnal, it was called The Millennial Hymns of Parley P. Pratt. It contained 50 of his hymns. So he wrote over 50 hymns. Uh, the current LDS hymnal contains seven of Parley's hymns. All right, Parley wrote more than two dozen tracts or pamphlets. So I guess if you, if you add them all together, you get to hundreds. I guess if you add all the hymns, the books, the pamphlets, everything else he wrote, you get into the hundreds. But as far as tracts and pamphlets, uh, more than two dozen. He also edited a New York newspaper called The Prophet. Uh, I think that was a Mormon uh, newspaper. All right. Edward Tollage, pictured above, New York World, 1870, had the following to say. Ask the people what brought them into the Mormon church and you would hear from every direction Parley Pratt's voice of warning. So it was a great missionary tool, brought in lots of people to the church. It was very well written. Uh, the other one, uh, according to Tollage, is Orson Pratt's tracks. Until it would almost seem that the Pratt's created the church. Maybe they did. Maybe Parley P. Pratt helped to create the Book of Mormon or wrote the Book of Mormon himself. Maybe he did create the church. All right, another statement by Grow. Parley's voluminous writings ensured that the Latter-day Saint message received an eloquent defense. All right, a few facts regarding Sidney Rigdon. Uh, before Parley met Joseph Smith, he knew Sidney Rigdon and was a convert to his doctrines. So Pratt, uh, Parley Pratt was a follower of Sidney Rigdon. Uh, you can read about this in Eber D. Howe's book, Mormonism Unveiled.
All right, Alexander Campbell, pictured above. Parley was converted to the Campbellite faith by Sidney Rigdon in 1829, and he became an elder in that church. So they knew each other. All right, so Parley was also a Campbellite minister in northern Ohio. This was before he got into Mormonism. He was a great orator, and he was trained as a minister by Sidney Rigdon. And in the Mormon history of the church, uh, Elder Parley P. Pratt had been a preacher in the same church with Mr. Rigdon. And this will come into effect as I do further videos about who wrote the Book of Mormon. All right, according to T.B.H. Stenhouse, the Rocky Mountain Saints, 1878, Parley was the most eloquent and forcible preacher of the Mormon church. So that's a pretty good source for Parley being the best preacher that they had. All right, primitivism, basically restoring the church in the modern day uh, back to how it was in the early days of Christ and his disciples, trying to make it as authentic as possible. Sidney Rigdon's brand of primitivism, or restoration of the gospel, found its way into the Book of Mormon possibly through sermons brought back from Rigdon's home in Ohio by traveling book peddler Parley P. Pratt. So there's that go-between again, and maybe Rigdon and Pratt were working together on the Book of Mormon. Uh, this is Kathleen Kimball Melanakos' book, Secret Combinations, Evidence of Early Mormon Counterfeiting. All right, from the same book, Parley was one of Mormonism's most prolific apologists, and it takes a lot of intelligence and some good writing to be a good apologist. All right, I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but uh, Parley was ordained an apostle on February 21st, 1835. He was the senior apostle after Brigham Young. He remained an apostle until his death on May 13, 1857. All right, Parley was appointed president of the Elder School in Jackson County, Missouri. It was modeled on the Kirtland School of the Prophets. Uh, Pratt taught 60 men, this according to his autobiography. And here's a revelation. Parley was to teach in the school of Zion. Uh, he was to preside over the school in the land of Zion. You can read the rest of this if you want. All right, so who wrote the lectures on faith? Uh, these went into the 1835 Doctrine and Covenants. They were the doctrine part of the Doctrine and Covenants. And there was rumors going around about who wrote them. And Bruce R. McConkie mentions this. He says, Some have wondered as to the authorship of the lectures on faith, even questioning the prophet's role and his involvement, suggesting instead that they were written by Parley P. Pratt, Sidney Rigdon or others. So if Parley P. Pratt can write the lectures on faith, he could probably write sections of the Doctrine and Covenants, sections of the Book of Mormon, or even the entire thing. From 1830 to 1857, Parley served many missions and baptized hundreds, if not thousands, of individuals into the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. So Parley had some pretty good converts. Uh, he converted his brother Orson Pratt, who went on to have a lot of influence in the church, became an apostle, uh, wrote a lot about the church and theology and doctrine. Uh, he also converted the future president and prophet John Taylor to the church, so that's pretty impressive. All right, Parley became involved in the anti-bank Kirtland Safety Society scandal of 1837 uh, in Ohio. He was a stockholder. Uh, so he probably lost a lot of money. <clears throat> it's interesting here on this uh, $5 note of the Kirtland Safety Society Bank. It says that Sidney Rigdon is the president of the bank. That's interesting. We're going to do a whole video about Sidney Rigdon. It's going to be a very long and in-depth uh, go on him. Uh, but he had a lot of influence in the early days of the church. And here we see on this note that he is president of this bank or anti-bank. And from Melanakos' book again, uh, Parley was an officer in the Danites in 1838. This was kind of a paramilitary group 
that went out and sought uh, vengeance and sought to protect the saints and uh, had some blood on their hands. And from the same book here, Parley became a member of the Secretive Council of 50 on March 11, 1844. Uh, that was the body that wanted to create a theocracy in the United States and in the whole world. It is also interesting to note that Parley published the second edition of the Book of Mormon. That came out in 1837. Uh, he did this with John Goodson at Kirtland, Ohio. Uh, this was a 3,000 to 5,000 copy printing. Uh, there was over 3,000 changes from the first edition, uh, mostly grammatical, but some were, uh, some were significant doctrinally. Uh, Parley was a leader in the migration of the church to the Great Basin in current Utah. Okay, according to Lyndon W. Cook, uh, Parley directed the affairs of the church in New York City uh, in 1844 to 1845. All right, Parley's gravestone here. Parley Parker Pratt, apostle, missionary, author. Uh, Parley died in Arkansas. He was actually murdered by Hector McLean. Uh, he was an aggrieved husband that shot Parley because Parley tried to seduce his wife, Eleanor, into becoming his 12th wife. Uh, Hector McLean was not having it, and poor Parley got murdered. And uh, some say that this had uh, some kind of an effect on Mountain Meadow Massacre. You can look that up for yourself. And that's going to do it for this video, and I thank you for watching. Did Parley P. Pratt write the Book of Mormon? video.